Hi everyone, I'm Francois. To continue on the G-Shock series, today I'll be reviewing the Master of G. For those of you who have seen my G-Shock GA2000 review, you know exactly what's in here. For those who haven't, let's get right into it because it's time to watch. So I figure you've already, already seen the, the thumbnail, but let's see it live. Without further ado, here it is. This is the G-Shock Mudmaster, Master of G, the GWG-1000. This is not an unboxing. This is a watch that I own for many months now, and I wanted to share it with you. My next review will be... This one right here, the 5600 series, because I wanted to show the contrast between the sizes and of course the form factor, but also the fact that in a smaller watch like this, that's a fraction of the price of one like this, you can get a lot of the functions you need. So I like this one, I like the form factor, but a lot of times I just slip on this one. So if you like these types of reviews, don't, don't hesitate. Press that uh, like button. And of course, leave a comment. It's always appreciated. And if you, um, if you subscribe, well, I um, encourage you to press that notification bell so that when I come out with this review of this one right here, the G-Shock 5600 review, well, you'll be notified. So I want to start uh, off the bat with the uh, specs. So let's go through the specs, and uh, what I'll do is I'll throw on the uh, the screen a few of the specs, but um, I'll read you the full length of specs. On this watch, it's just phenomenal what you have for this behemoth of a watch. This is really a beast of a watch, I should say. And it's not for all wrists, I know, but in any case, let's just get on with the specs. So this is taken... Note that this is taken directly on the uh, G-Shock website. So it's a multi-band atomic timekeeping. It receives time calibration radio signals, which keep the display time accurate. Auto receive function, manual receive function. You have the different signals and frequencies on which it operates. Uh, and um, it's a tough solar power watch, so no need to change a battery. It's shock resistant, of course, mud resistant. There's uh, buttons use cylinders, cylinder type guards structure with gaskets for, uh, for soft end cylinder to prevent mud dust from getting into the watch. It's vibration resistant with alpha gel. It's a tough movement and we'll get back to that. Auto hand home position correction, just in case everything gets knocked out of a line. Smart access electronic crown and quick lock. 200 meter water resistance. There's a flyback function. The hands can move away from the LCD screen during the measurements. There's a triple sensor direct access button, buttons I should say. There's an altimeter, a digital compass, a barometer, a thermometer. There's, there are LED lights uh, for, um, for the face and also for the backlight of the digital display itself. There's a five day alarm, there's world time, there's hourly time signal, there's a stopwatch, a countdown timer, full auto calendar, and uh, it's pre-programmed until the year 2099. There's um, a storage battery, so basically it's a sol solar rechargeable battery and a level uh, battery level indicator. The module in here is a 5463, and we'll see that in the back of the, uh, of, of the watch itself, because it's indicated there. And the model here for this version itself is GWG1001A3JF. That JF at the end basically signals that the, indicates that this is a 
Japanese market, the Japanese domestic market. So basically, I bought this other than on a um, on the G-Shock uh, uh, website. I here in Canada use the G-Shock.ca typically, but to get this one specifically to make sure I have a sapphire crystal, this is not indicated in the specs, but this is a sapphire crystal. I had to go through the Japanese domestic market. So obviously I won't go through all the different functions it's kind of standard in a sense, but not just that, is that if you want a detailed tutorial on that, I encourage you to see Watch Geek's tutorial on the GWG-1000, and I think it's a combined GWG-1000 and 2000. They came out with a, um, a, a recent version. Uh, quite frankly, I'd rather have this 1000, and you know, maybe I'll get to a, um, a point well where I, I may get the GWG 2000 I'm hesitating because quite frankly this one with what I've seen is better I think this one is more than suitable for my needs but I'll go through the different functions quickly just to show you what it does because I want you to see how uh, it, it, it operates and of course I'll go through the specs um, directly on the watch itself so let's get right into it so as usual, we have here buttons but um, to operate the watch, but uh, like it said, is there, it's, it's not usual, but we have a crown here. So the crown operates a little like a, um, I would say a cursor. So when you get into a function and you need to increase or decrease or, or uh, change your, um, you see here you have world time as well. Uh, if you want to change the, um, the, 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 the world time, your time zone, you scroll with the crown itself. So that's really unusual. And it indicated that it had a, um, a kind of an indica indicator. So when you unscrew it, you see here that it's red. So what happens is that because people are really not used to having a crown on a G-Shock, they may forget that they have unscrewed it to operate it. And if they see the red, it's really obvious that they need to screw it back in. And as you saw, it's really, really easy to, uh, to operate. The only thing is that it's kind of squeezed here, but if you see here, you have knurling right there that makes it easier to, to grip. But don't tighten it too much because it's going to get really hard to, to open up. So you just give it a small squeeze and you're good to go. Like I said, the buttons are uh, encased in these type of button guards. This here is the light and it has this button guard as well. And they have gaskets inside. You see here... It's indicated triple sensor. You have a sensor right there for your different operations for the barometer. Here you have the compass, you have the altimeter, and and um, the 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 rugged structure here on 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 a G-Shock, as always, will protect the uh, the crystal. But in this case, because they wanted to make sure it's really rugged, this is a sapphire crystal. So that sapphire crystal won't be scratched. You can, you know, you can knock it around and you really need to knock it hard for it to, to either scratch or even break. So at least you have the ruggedness of this watch. And this basically is why I wanted this watch. We last year wanted to go to a campsite and we had a lot of activities planned. And I really wanted to have one watch only to put throughout the, uh, the uh, I, I don't want to say the events, but uh, throughout the week we stayed there. We had you know, water um, activities, we had a lake right in front, we, had, we went for boating, we went for um, quad events as well. We were, we were uh, swimming, we were uh, running, we were walking on the, on the, on the beach, uh, we were canoeing, we were boating. So I really wanted a watch that it was kind of set it, forget it, and can take everything you throw at it. So that's why I bought this watch. This was a purposely bought watch because I like larger watches. That's why I really love the G-Shocks. Well, this one was perfect. 
So to operate this, um, this, this watch, it's really easy. The buttons are really accessible. You don't need to press really hard on them, but you still have to put some pressure so they don't operate without your explicit press. And um, like I said, this crown here can be um, unscrewed easily and rescrewed in because as you see here, there's the, the red that you can't see anymore. So you never forget it. Um, and as normal G-Shocks, of course, you have the indication on the, uh, on the buttons, but this time around, it's in the back, mainly. So let's talk about the, the case back. So as you can see here, it's shock resist, of course. Uh, more and more of these G-Shock uh, watches, you'll see no longer the shock resist, but carbon core guard. This one, this version here, came out just before the carbon core guard was getting the uh, kind of a norm within the G-Shocks. But still, it's really well purposely built. As you can see here, you have these structures to make sure that protects everything. Uh, you have here the indication of what uh, you have in the watch. You have here the compass, which is that button, and that's the indication right there. You have the display here, that's the button right there. You have the different mode button, that's right here. And you have the altimeter, that's right here. So your button indications are on the back. So it limits the quantity of writing on the front. And of course you have here the button at the bottom where I indicated it was the light. As you can see, it's a stainless steel back. It's made in Japan. It's water resist to 20 bars. Well, it's 200 meters. You have the Casio, and as I said, you have that module number right there, 5463. And the model number, GWG 1000. So it's really rugged. Uh, the fact that this is a larger watch, you, I don't know if you noticed, but you have these kind of, um, let's say, uh, a buffer between the watch and your wrist so that if you look at it, it curves and hugs your wrist even better. So these can be taken off if you want, as you can see with the screw there, but because it uh, adds more comfort when it's on your wrist, I wouldn't touch that. I would leave it as is. As you saw in the back, you have the different indications of the buttons, but here, the main ones, altimeter and compass, are indicated nonetheless. And of course, just to kind of let you know that the triple sensor is here, well, they put it right there. You don't have the indication that there's a light there, but like I said, it's in the back. You have that G-Shock right there, and in those screws that screw in really tight to make sure that you have that 200 meter water resistance. As I indicated earlier, you have all your indications here for your world time. So essentially, when you adjust your watch, your second hand will point to your time zone. If, it, if you're in the world time, of course, it'll adjust the world time, and that's how you'll know which of the world time time zones you'll have. So if we talk about the different functions, different modes, this is the button, as it was indicated in the bottom uh, uh, the, on the case back. So as soon as you press, you see that your hands get out of the way of the display. In this case here, it's just temporary because they kind of basically say, here's your barometer and here's your indication. You can read it, then you move on. So it goes back to the timekeeping. Why you see here that the second hand is, has stopped moving is that, I don't know if you can see it, but you have the plus and the minus is basically because the bar bar uh, barometric pressure is kind of, kind of declining. If you see the graph here, you already see that it's declining and the tendency for the last, and that's something I don't really remember in the, uh, the user manual, but for the last, I think, a few hours, the tendency of the, um, of the bar barometric pressure is negative. So that's why it's on the negative side of this three o'clock zero.
let's just say you would have zero right there. Then another click, you have temp, temperature. So again, it moves away, gives you the temperature, and then goes back to the timekeeping. The temperature, of course, uses the sensor right here. If you have it on your wrist, your uh, body temperature will influence the temperature, of course. So you keep the watch separate, maybe attach it to your bag, keep it there for you know at least 20 to 30 minutes, and you'll have, you'll have an accurate reading. I did a few tests, and with a, um, uh, a separate thermometer, it was spot on. So if I bring this closer so that you can see, you have the next function, which is REC. So basically, it's a recording of your different altimeter points. Basically, every time you have a recording, it'll every certain period of time will uh, will indicate the meters, the number of meters that you have um, climbed. It goes, it tie in, it ties in with the altimeter. So you have kind of a point by point of how many meters you've been um, you've been increasing or decreasing. Then here, the ST is the stopwatch, and of course you have the different buttons to operate it. So you can of course. Start it here, stop it there, and if I recall, you just reset it right there. So that is the stopwatch. Then you have a timer. That timer is adjusted with the crown. So you unscrew the crown. You, of course, change the, uh, the different uh, um, minutes and seconds, and then you operate it as I did with the stopwatch by starting here stopping there and resetting up here or i should say reinitializing re re it then you have your alarm this is on the signal as you can see here the signal is the hourly chime and you go from one alarm to another as, as you can see you have ten uh, five alarms and you go back to signal if you want to see as I, when you adjust it, the hour, the um, the hour, the, the, the hands will uh, move out of the way. But if you just want to look at it like we just did now, and you're on your alarm and you kind of they're kind of the, in the way, there's one specific way where you can change the handset to move out of the way is by pressing the light and then the mode fu function right after. There you go. And then and then when you press on the mode once again, it goes back. So that was the alarm. This is the world time. The world time will show it to you as you saw here. I have it to Denver. It's the second hand. I'll go back to it. The second hand showed what time zone I was temporarily and the hands moved to the time itself so if I'm in the world time the hands show the time as well as the uh, digital display will show you the home time so that HT that you see there is home time so if you want to let's say move the to uh, to another time zone you have the hour directly on your hands. If you want to see your different uh, time zone, well, you just go to it and then go back to your ordinary time. The uh, RC here is basically saying, I received the time signal at a specific date. In this case here, it's March 2nd and at a specific time. It was 1.04 in the morning. Usually what it does, if I recall correctly, it uh, goes and grabs the uh, the time um, uh, the, the the time signal uh, up to five times uh, during the night. So it's either at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. So in this case, it was one o four. Then you're back to your uh, normal time. Let's say let's call it the home time, where you see that gray triangle right there. 
So you can adjust, of course, what you see here is the altimeter. And this is a quick set to the altimeter, basically. So it gives you the, the, uh, the, the, the number of meters you are currently. <clears throat> this is a compass. Uh, the compass basically will, depend on, depending on the, um, the region you are, will always show on the second hand, the north. And I can tell you where the north is here is exactly where the second hand is pointing. What it's doing in the display, however, it shows you at the noon region where you're heading. So in this case here, and let's move this out of the way, I'm pointing northeast 43 degrees. And if I move like this, it's going to change as I move. And it's always the noon time that will show where you're pointing. And then, and as you could see, I moved the, the hands out of the way and it came back to the, um, the, uh, the, the, the compass itself. So I can go back to my normal time. And as in many of the G-Shock uh, watches, if you're in a mode somewhere and you wanna go back to the normal or the standard position, you just press a long time and it'll automatically go directly to the standard position. But let me just take these hands out of the way what it'll do is that, let me show you this here. If you press a long time, it'll go back to the home time and you'll see temporarily right there, there was an H to tell you the battery level. So in this case, it was high and then it goes back to normal. So that's how you know if you need to recharge your battery or not. Like we said, this is a solar powered uh, watch with a, a rechargeable battery. And if it goes under a certain level, under medium and you get to low, certain functions don't work. So you wanna make sure that you're always recharged. But quite frankly, I have this stored in a window box, a uh, watch box that has a window on top of it. And I rarely see it go down the uh, high. And when you wear it often in your, uh, on your wrist, it'll of course charge as you, uh, as you walk throughout your day, unless it's covered by your coat or uh, a shirt of some sort. So that was it. It was kind of quick, I know. Uh, like I said, go to the uh, Watch Geek uh, channel and uh, I'll leave a link to his tutorial of how to operate this. And uh, quite frankly, this one here is a fully manual operation. A few of the G-Shocks I'll be showing in my G-Shock series have access to, a, um, to the G-Shock app. And in there, you can set it uh, from the from your phone in this case here it's not a connected watch but quite frankly i'd rather have it like that because if you're outside in the wilderness yes you know usually you have your phone with you uh, but if it, you want a quick access to it it's right there you don't need to take out your phone i want to get back to the list of functions on here i talked about the tough movement so essentially G-Shock has been developing this type of, of rugged watch. Uh, these watches, as everybody knows, they've been on the market since 1983. And uh, six years later, they proved the industry wrong with their tough movement. And since then, they've been developing different types of uh, analog watches. This one is one of, uh, of them. And I want to finish up with the, the, uh, the strap itself, and then we'll conclude this video. And as you can see here, the strap is another type of resin, uh, a bit like the watch itself. Some people don't like the fact that this is 
they call it plastic, but this is a resin. This is a tough resin. More and more we see the carbon core guard. Basically it's a resin infused with carbon, but this here can take a beating and of course continue on. Uh, if it's metal, well, you nick and you can dent your metal. In this case, this resin on the band, the resin on the case is really, really tough. You kind of have here a nick here where the keeper is basically kept there from uh, moving around. The keeper is one of the items that I kind of don't like uh, because they, um, they put in a metal keeper. And yes, it's signed. It's really, it gives a really great look to the watch. You have a double, uh, double access, double um, uh, buckle to, uh, to tie this in really tight. And when you put it in here, this here makes it so that it helps the keeper to stay there. But it doesn't really stay there. It's not necessarily a, a good thing. It doesn't work really well. Uh, this always moves around. Um, I have other G-Shocks where this here is kind of a rubbery um, resin and it stays there and it sticks there. And we'll talk about those when we get to them. But uh, this is, I would say, the only thing I don't like about it because the rest of the structure is really solid. This is flexible enough to be comfortable on your wrist. It's tight enough and solid enough to, you know, not worry about it. And um, of course you have the different indications on it. The buckle is not signed, but at least the, um, the keeper is signed. Uh, you have the vibe resist where this is one of the features and you have the mud resist. And this is the key features of the structure of this watch. You have this triple sensor, multiband six, tough solar. So it's it's kind of the writing that tells you here's the toughest watch you's, you'll you'll ever wear. Some people you know don't like writing on the on the band, but I feel it gives a uh, great perspective and you know it it um, it gives character to the watch itself. So let me conclude on putting it on my wrist. We'll do a wrist shot. Uh, and as I put it on my wrist, I'll show you also the loom because a lot of people said, you know, oh, the loom on G-Shocks and Casio is not that good. You'll see, this one is perfect. So let me get it on my wrist right away. Like I said, if you like these types of reviews, you know, you could subscribe and press the notification bell because this is my next review and you'll be notified when I come out with this one. Let me put it on my wrist. Remind you, my wrist is a seven inch wrist. Goes on really well. And you see where I was saying? It hugs right there. And there's this support. So it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's floating on your wrist. And yes, it's a behemoth of a watch. It's really a beast of a watch. It's not all for, for, for everyone, but it wears well. That keeper, like I said, it, you know, it jumps around. Sometimes it just, because I wear it tight, you know, it, it, it stops. But uh, sometimes it, you know, gets here and it, it flaps around. So that's the only knock I have on this type of, uh, of watch. But otherwise, the build is really fantastic. So I hope you like this type of review. Uh, like I said, always press the like button, leave a comment. It's always appreciated. And uh, I truly appreciate you joining me. And I truly hope to see you next time.